Hi, I'm Alan Newdy from the Historical Aviation Film Unit and I'm here at Flair NZ at Kofa Airfield near Hamilton, New Zealand talking to John Garvey from Duke Engines about their four-stroke axial piston engine. What's the early history of Duke Engines? Where did, where did the company come from? The company came and started, Noel Duke had thought about, has always had always wanted to, always believed that for the internal combustion engine to be, uh, to improve, there had to be a simpler solution, it had to be a simplification of the engine and he came up with a concept that he realised being a, a very gifted engineer that um, it, it, it was a world beater and it had a lot of major advantages so he set about documenting that process, he then decided that he should patent it and um, initially at the same time decided to create a first prototype, a working prototype. That was kinematically analysed by Open University, it confirmed that it was a robust engine, or would be a robust engine, and really that was where it started. And from then it's just been a series of evolutions and, and trials and errors and learning, and um, we were fortunate enough to be invited by uh, NZTE to join them at Oshkosh, which we did. We went there with no expectations. We just thought, well, we'll see what the world tells us about the engine. And the result of that trip was just incredible. It was an amazing result. And um, we took an engine that was delivering uh, 180 horsepower at 6,250 RPM, or 103 horsepower at uh, 3,300 RPM, uh, weighed 46 kilograms and the world just said wow and as a result of that experience or well, at the moment we realized just how strong the interest was and just how the world was lacking in a new engine and just how historic everything is out there. You've got two engines on display here today um, tell me a little about the, the larger of the two. The larger of the two is a 180 horsepower at uh, 2700 rpm or uh, uh, 3,500 at 6,000 RPM. It's, uh, it weighs 100 kilograms. The package that you see there, we can now almost fit five litres into that package. That's uh, specification wise, we're calling this a 4.2 litre engine. Um, that's actually the size that we're doing all our dyno work on at the moment. We're actually dynoing our, our engine, a, a new iteration of that particular engine in the US um, next, probably next month in November at Detroit. This is 180 horsepower at 6,250 RPM and 103 at um, 3,300 RPM. It weighs 46 kilograms. That's the engine we had at, at Oshkosh and that was the Th that size really <laughs> fitted the market, particularly LSA and uh, microlites and, and home builds. Everybody said to resonate for that size. That's a configuration we just created based on the packaging that we had there. In fact, the reality is that we can um, create whatever's required. Obviously, we're going to end up with whoever we're manufacturing with, in a, with a range, but th there's a lot of flexibility. The concept is flexible over. You um, mentioned that the, the engine that's on display up in the cloud at the moment is prototype number one. What number of prototype are you up to now? It, it, it's very hard to measure because there's been lots of iterations and it's usually just rebuilds and retrofits. And we, we, we say, sometimes we say three generations, sometimes we say five because it really does depend how you measure it. In reality, probably 10 or 20. But um, the, the concepts, originally we were developing them all in a one litre package. And that's the casing. That's the casing we just talked about was the was the one liter. We can now fit two liters into the same package. The bigger engine that we've talked about was originally designed as a three liter engine, and we can now fit five liters into it. But they they are the two platforms that we've been working on primarily. Um, and the, and the reason for going to the three liter was really just to tested at a bigger engine because you know there's, there's, there's considerable differences when you get up in size and the scope for this engine is um, fairly fairly broad so um, yeah, so, we're, so we're looking at a, we're at an aviation event at the moment but presumably it has wider applications as a automotive marine 
Yes, absolutely. I mean, theoretically, almost any application or most applications for an internal combustion engine are opportunities. Our focus is to keep to niche industries where the barriers to entry are not too high. Aviation was considered appropriate because it, um, it delivered, or sorry, it fitted a niche that, that was needed. There's a real demand for it. The other area that we see is strongly possible is uh, hybrid uh, range extender for hybrid electric cars because again, the huge conservatism in the auto industry, but in the hybrid area, there's no real platforms and no real um, position. In the other areas, we're talking to people in the stationary um, generator engine, a uh, generator market. A big advantage for in the generator, particularly portable generators, is the weight saving is huge. Um, and so there, there's, a, there's a distinct market that we see a focus on. The other one is probably marine outboards and so forth. In fact, a specification we use to develop our 3D diversion. Um, which is a few years ago now, was when Mercury were just bringing out their Verado engine as their four-stroke um, model and we based the specification on that because four-stroke marine engines are hugely expensive and, and hugely heavy and full of electronics and we could deliver the performances they needed out of a very basic um, or very simple platform. Um, I heard you talking earlier on about multi-fuel capabilities, what's the story there? You, our, all our um, trials or our, our development has been done on, on petrol or gasoline uh, until in the last year we, we tested it on Kero or jet fuel and to our surprise it, um, it ran, we just switched it over one day and it ran as well if not better than it was running on on petrol so that gave us the um, momentum I guess to dyno it which we did found the results were actually extremely promising so we've now um, reconfigured the engine at the time we were running a compression ratio of 12.5 to 1 and it, it was performing well we've, we've now um, redesigned for Kero specifically um, with a ratio of 9 to 1 and uh, because of the interest in, in, in the jet fuel um, in the States, that's the um, first, first dynoing we're going to do because it's, the military are looking for a single fuel and we have the potential to deliver and be the first engine in the world, to, a spark ignition engine, to actually deliver good power. What is the aspect of these engines that, that differentiate themselves from, from anything else, apart from their, their size and performance? Um, is, is there any, any other technology wise that differentiates them? Well the technology is that we've managed to do what the world has never been able to do, which is make an axial piston engine appear to, de or to deliver a, a good result. And they've always been considered um, high, high performing engines, axial piston engines, but they would appear to have always had a limited, a very limited life. I mean, the only real application that we understand that they're still used in is um, torpedoes, and torpedoes don't need a very long life. And so, you know, the self-destruction thing doesn't become too much of an issue. Um, and we think that what we have done is, is develop the technology that has allowed us to overcome the issues that have been the problem and, and the reason why it's never, never been commercially um, successful in the past.